Back. A church with significant cultural ties to long-standing African-American heritage is being restored and brought back to life. Chloe Nordquist is in Leland, North Carolina, with how one community is preserving a piece of the past that dates back centuries. If you look past the cobwebs and chipped paint, this building has a story to tell. Therese Chapel was uh, located on the banks of the Cape Fair River, and we're estimating that it was built by former enslaved uh, African Americans uh, on the Cedar Hill Plantation around about the 1850s, 1860s. It was moved to this lot in the early 1900s, just outside Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, it became active, it stayed active until roughly 2005. The church was uh, deteriorating pretty rapidly. Beatty worshipped here most of his life. 1955 or 56, somewhere in that time frame. I grew up in the community here. Uh, I can walk to the church for miles. So he decided to create a foundation to restore it. With the help of partner organizations and raised funds, renovations started about three months ago. They're trying to preserve every part possible, including the original bell, which currently sits in storage. Historic preservation is important for a variety of reasons. Uh, first of all, when you preserve the built history of a community, it grounds your community. It gives your community a sense of place, a sense of identity, of uniqueness. Travis Gilbert leads the Historic Wilmington Foundation, a nonprofit that provides resources in the community to preserve the area's history. They've also played a role in restoring Reeves Chapel. Our region has lacked uh, the preservation and interpretation of black historic sites. And the preservation of Reeves Chapel is one of many efforts to bring that history back to the forefront of our shared experience. This particular structure is at the northern range of the Gullah Geechee Cultural Heritage Corridor, which is a National Park Service corridor identified specifically because of the uh, culture of the descendants of the people, the Gullah and Geechee from West Africa that were brought over specifically for their knowledge of rice cultivation. Jessica Blake is with the North Carolina Coastal Land Trust, which has partnered with Owls Foundation for the past six years to help buy and preserve this chapel. It's American history that hasn't been told really well, and this structure is a piece of that history. It's the oldest building, uh, African American structure in this area. Uh, you have to realize after slavery that uh, because of uh, the laws and because of Jim Crow, African Americans weren't allowed to socialize at a lot of other uh, public uh, places. So their churches and schools were very instrumental. Al says this project sends a message about preserving this piece of the past. And it's not being wiped out as other history uh, in the country has been. The plan is for the building to be finished by the end of the year. While it may never hold services again, Al and Jessica hope it will be accepted by the state as a historical site with the original bell and all. This was our venue for outside, uh, letting us know that there was a bigger world than just here. I'm Chloe Nordquist reporting. The West Bank Heritage Foundation's mission is to bridge the history of communities and people through involvement and education.